Hey there, everybody. Eric back again, your learning futurist. Let's talk about digital twins this week and how it relates to holograms. Here we have Whitney Houston. That's not really her. This is after she passed away, giving a concert to adoring fans in the form of a hologram. We also saw this in fiction. Uh, and this is Sharon Apple being represented of a artificial intelligence giving a concert to millions of adoring fans in the series Macross Plus. Most famously though, uh, after Tupac Shakur was killed, appeared in concert to thousands and thousands of adoring fans in the form of a hologram as well. These are a form of digital twins and we're doing this more and more uh, moving towards the future. We're just making copies, digital copies of places, things, and even people. And the most so cool example of this is avatars. That's right, ABBA, avatars. I, I love that pun. I love everything about this project. Uh, they've created digital twins of the band and this band, this digital version of it, is releasing a new album and they're going to be having a tour with the new music being represented as they were in the 70s. Now, what does this all mean for the future of copying people? Uh, what does it mean for people that have passed away and, and legal and copyright issues? And what is teachers that have passed away and their learning content still lives on in the form of digital twins? We're gonna talk about all that stuff in this video in about holograms, digital twins, and avatars. Oh my. All right, so let's first talk about what spurred on this conversation that I'm sharing with you today. ABBA, the 70s superstar band, has released a new album. Uh, actually, I think just a single for now at the beginning of September here. And they announced that they are creating a tour so people can actually go and see them live in concert, but not just go see them like you would go see the Rolling Stones. Uh, play uh, as they get older, but you're going to see them as they were in the 70s playing their new music that they just created uh, in the last year or so. This is amazing. So how is this working? What does this mean for like as a signal as the future of digital twins? Well, it looks amazing. So we can see here, this is a recreation that um, they, they showed us with the announcement that came out uh, early in September and they're going to be appearing on stage as their digital twin avatars, de-aged avatars. But this is actually really them performing. This is not like the cases up front where I show, we showed Whitney Houston and Tupac. That's where they have to take a bunch of photographs and images of that person and try to recreate them afterwards. They, in this case, they actually, the real performers performed it uh, with motion capture, capturing their facial expressions, capturing their body movements as they perform these things. And they're going to be recreating the scene as holograms for these this concert. They call it a tour, but it's not really a tour. Uh, it's pretty much in one place. We'll get to that in just a moment. So they're actually performing what you see on stage. They're just not really there. They're just taking their, their physical movements and now we see more of this blending of real and digital in just like we talk about in the realities, augmented and virtual realities that I talk a lot about on this channel. So they're captured and then they're represented in a stadium they're actually building just for this purpose, right? Um, to meld the digital and the real together uh, more purposely and with more accuracy, you need to take the real and digitize it, right? So they're building a stadium and they're gonna, that stadium is gonna have a digital component and a real component and they're going to play with being able to put digital components in the real world and vice versa. So you may be able to go in, in VR or be to this concert in VR and watch the holograms or go in real life and watch the holograms from VR or something like that. I've actually played with this idea myself what you're looking at now is a um, a recreation of one of the buildings in 
my school where I teach at, Kyoto University of Foreign Studies. And this is just outside the lecture hall. I'm not going to go in here right now myself, though, but if I were to click on this button here, I'd go inside of the lecture hall, and I might be giving a lecture in here so students could come in and see me lecture in virtual reality and also be there in physical being sued in the actual desks and trying to experiment with the students being able to interact with people being represented as avatars and physically there in multiple environments using a digital twin. There's a lot of exciting things that uh, I'm experimenting with that, with this idea. So coming back to ABBA's case, uh, they're building a new stadium just to house these concerts. I'm sure probably they have other concerts in mind other than ABBA for this purpose, but this stadium is built for the express purpose of mixed reality and mixing and melding the digital with the real. Very fascinating stuff. So here's a representation of the kind of digital version of the environment that they have to map out. They take probably the plans. So it's being built with the express purpose of having a digital copy and a real copy and being able to play with those things simultaneously uh, for various uh, mixed reality purposes. I've even played with this myself here. This is my actually my physical desk that I'm sitting at right now, but I've created a, a digital version of my room and my desk, but I've scaled it up. So participants of my seminars or my classes, my students can come and actually be present on my desk and um, you, they can be represented as avatars in real time on the top of my desk and I can interact with them. So those are some of the things that we might see coming out of this tour uh, if it's done in a, in a way that's more interactive for the audience with this avatar, uh, I'm sorry, avatar voyage, <laughs> right? We also see this in more available technology to everyone. This is the Unreal Engine's MetaHuman project that was released earlier in 2021, maybe at the end of 2020, uh, that gives game designers mostly, but people looking to make like uh, sort of CG movies, a way to easily create high fidelity avatars, and they're called MetaHumans. And this is a very um, intriguing project and a lot of people are creating some very cool kind of digital twins of themselves and using them for different purposes. Perhaps something like uh, education moving forward. I actually have done this as well. This is me, <laughs> a story about me actually. I actually appeared at an ac academic conference in, I think this is 2018, as a digital version of myself. I actually have uh, a digital version of myself, and I transformed myself in the middle of my talk, talking about melding realities for learning, and I changed myself into an avatar just as I was talking. And uh, I was using different sensors around me to gather my facial expressions and my hand movements. And so that transition from being a human to a digital version of myself went pretty seamlessly. And it shocked enough people to where they wrote some articles uh, coming out of this because they had never seen that thing before. So we're going to see more of this moving towards the, the future, people being represented as their digital twin, whether that be controlled by an AI or controlled by the human behind the scenes as well. Um, famously, um, we're starting to recreate actors and performers like the Whitney Houston and Tupac uh, examples up front, but Carrie Fisher was famously um, put in the role of Princess Leia for a film that came out called Rogue One after she had passed away. And talking about the rights to this, um, her family tried to, or the estate of Carrie Fisher, tried to pull back some um, money from Disney about this. But uh, in this case, what happened, we don't know the exact details, but contractually, if you're an actor in a movie, you sign away the rights to your likeness of that character or your portrayal of that character to the studio and that that probably was sold that those rights were sold to disney when lucas arts and uh, and george lucas sold that to disney so they really didn't have any claim over uh, 
that representation of somebody that had passed away and was recreated with a digital twin in this case. But that's one of the reasons that ABBA doing this is really something of a game changer because this is a group of people that have decided to take ownership of their digital twins and use it for the express purposes of showing themselves in a younger age and because um, really ABBA is kind of grown in popularity and up and down, up and down in the last, what, 40 years or so. And so they, they have whole new audiences that are younger people and uh, the musical Mamma Mia and things like that that came out. So the IP is pretty ripe for this kind of thing. So now they can tour uh, as older individuals. Maybe they don't, they're not as spry as they used to be. They won't be as spry on stage, but they can Get, capture themselves doing that performance and the essence of them can be represented on stage. And now they can enjoy owning the intellectual property of that digital twin and having a little bit more control over how it's done and perhaps having more control after, uh, God forbid, they pass away and these, this concert lives on in infamy or for the for rest of time in their in its digital form so taking control of your digital self in the future is going to be something we're going to be thinking a lot more and this move to think about it uh, preemptively and use it in this context shows a signal that i think we're going to be doing this more often and for more purposes okay so let's bring this back to learning i call myself a learning futurist so it wouldn't be um anything if i wanted didn't connect this to um, education. So, uh, news that came out last year, I believe, um, is that we, of course, we're moving towards more online learning, more automated learning processes, uh, more e-learning type situations. And professors that have made online courses, of course, have passed away, but universities have continued to use their course materials, their lectures for any different purposes and there was a story uh, that a student I believe this was a um, kind of an art history class tried to reach out to their professor to ask a question and found out maybe halfway through the course that their professor had passed away and they were continuing to kind of receive lectures and assignments in through this automated process and they thought that they were alive right they were taking a class from a teacher that was doing it and still alive so this is going to be a more pressing issue as we move forward, especially after COVID, because universities are being pressured to put their contents online and available to students in an on-demand format. Does that intellectual property belong to the university? Does it belong to the teacher? Does it now get to live in the university's kind of systems indefinitely without much uh, rights to the, the teacher? Right now, the situation is very harsh for something like an adjunct professor uh, rather than a, a full-time professor. Like you get hired to create courses for the university or whatever institution. They basically uh, have you sign over the rights to that content as, as a part of your part-time employment. And so the, the leverage that you might have over the content that you create uh, varies very greatly depending on your situation. But this is going to be happening more and more as we start to digitize ourselves and how that stuff gets um, related to future audiences. So let me just pose the question to you. Uh, think about it in your own situation. If you could make an avatar of yourself, would you want to do so now? What would you have it do? Would you program it with some AI or would you have it uh, represent you in other forms, perhaps online, maybe a website or something? Uh, would you put yourself in movies or something like that? Uh, do you want somebody to be able to create an avatar of you? And what would be the restrictions you want, want to place on that as somebody making an avatar of you in the future, right? But think to yourself about digital twins, right? We're using this for the approach to smart cities. We're taking twins of cities to be able to analyze things like waste management and energy conservation and uh, we're using human digital twins to um, being able to interact with important people and interesting places as well but 
Does this technology give you a bit of, ooh, this is weird, or does it give you a bit of help? <laughs> All right. That's it for this week, guys. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next video.